What's up guys and welcome back to a brand new video today here on Codename Pizza. And more importantly, welcome to the full Voyager Despair Easter Egg Guide for solo players. Now if you watch this entire Easter Egg Guide and you are playing solo, I can guarantee you guys that you will be able to beat this Easter Egg very, very soon. I've made this guide so, so easy for you to just follow and easily get this done. I worked on this guide for around one to two days and before I started making this guide, I'd only played Voyager Despair around two times and never completed the Easter Egg. When I got to the point where I thought this guide was perfect i managed to beat this easter egg without going down at all and that only took me a day to get to so you guys can easily do it as well now i've optimized every single step for solo players but like i said before you can jump in with a team and play this as well it really doesn't matter and you guys can play it as a team or solo it's just optimized for solo players so if this helps you out at all i really would appreciate it if you guys could drop a like on this video these videos do take a long time to make compared to other types of content so please make sure you drop that like let's aim for three 3,115 likes on this video and if you guys are brand new to the channel make sure you click that subscribe button support the channel and become the latest member of the pizza club but with that all out the way let's jump into the entire solo easter egg tutorial for voyager despair so before we even jump into the game let's have a look at our create a class menu the most important part of any game is making sure that you've got the right class set up ready and rocking for this easter egg so jumping into create a class first things first let's look at our elixirs now inside of my elixir as you guys can see that the first one I have active is anywhere but here. This elixir is a guaranteed lifesaver when you are playing solo or even on co-op as well. If you get surrounded by zombies, activate this elixir and you'll teleport away from those zombies and not go down. Definitely put this on, it will help you out a lot. Next up inside of our elixirs is probably the most important elixir out of them all, which is going to be equip mint. You will definitely be needing homunculuses, which is the new monkey bomb inside of this map for this solo easter egg to make it easy and the equipment elixir means that you can instantly refill those homunculuses up whenever you want when this is active. It's an absolute lifesaver once again, so put equipment on. Next up, we've got Temporal Gift. This will basically just mean that you can double the amount of time that drops are on the map for. So with this active, a double points will last 60 seconds instead of 30 seconds, meaning that you can open the map a lot, a lot quicker. And finally, inside of this, I don't really use this inside of this game, but I put on Aftertaste. If you guys ever think that you're in a tricky situation, just have Aftertaste on, and then when you go down, you will get to keep your perks. So that is elixirs out the way. Let's go and have a look at our weapons on the right hand side. With the starting weapon, you can literally put whatever you feel more comfortable with, but I feel comfortable with the strife and making sure that I've got our bayonet attachment on there as well. Making my way up to the equipment, I would prefer to have the wraith grenades unlocked, but because I prestiged, I couldn't use them. So I just use the acid bombs. You won't really be using any of these during this easter egg. So just pick what you feel most comfortable with if you get in any sticky situations. And finally, special weapons. This is very, very important. Make sure you put on the Hammer of Valhalla. This is by far the best specialist weapon for this easter egg. If you want to complete it, place on that special weapon. Now looking at perks, we're going to place on Dying Wish into our Deinu slot. That means that we can pick this up first, and if you ever get to the point where you're about to go down, this will give you an extra life. Very, very important perk right there. Next up, we've got Stamina up in our Ra slot, basically meaning that you've got extra stamina, you can run around the map longer, and a little bit faster as well. Then inside of our Zeus slot, we've got Quick Revive. Basically, if you get hit a few times, you'll regen your health a little bit quicker. Quicker. And finally, inside of our modifier, you guys guessed it, we got Victorious Tortoise because it is by far my favorite perk inside of this game. But there you go. Now that you've got all of your creator class down, let's jump straight into a game of Voyage of Despair. So once you spawn into the map, I'm going to advise you guys to stay inside of the spawn room, killing zombies until around round six or round seven. If you get any double points drops, make sure you put that temporal gift on and just gather up as much points as you can. Just stay inside that spawn room. And once you've got around 15,000 points, then you can go and start opening up the map. Of course, your first thing inside of this game for you to do is go and open Pack-a-Punch. So make your way straight to the back of the map on top of the poop deck and activate the artifact. As soon as you've activated the artifact, drop down and you'll now notice that you've got a stone that spawns in right here where these boxes once were. Activate the stone and you've activated one of four stones. You've got another three to go and find. So go down these sets of stairs, make your way down the next set of stairs, and then finally drop down the hole. And now you're going to go and make your way down into the engine room where you are going to go and activate the next stone. After this, make your way to the grand staircase in the middle of the map. Make your way to the bottom of this area and you'll see the third stone on the ground right there. And the final one is going to be over underneath where the spawn area was. Just make your way into that cargo hold and you'll find the final one right there. pack a bunch is the first step of the Easter egg and you have just completed it. So well done. So the next step is by far the one that everyone thinks is the most complicated. It's really not as long as you know exactly what 
what you are doing. So at this point, I want you guys to get a pen and paper out. So if you've not got one at hand, pause this video and quickly get a pen and paper. On that paper, draw a triangle. Then underneath that triangle, draw an upside down triangle. Then underneath that, draw a triangle that's facing up with a line going through the top. And then underneath that, draw a triangle that's facing down with a line going through the bottom. Put a little dash next to each one of those triangles. And now we are ready to look at this. So the next step that you guys are going to be working on is what's known as the clock step. Now that you've got those symbols wrote down in your piece of paper, you are good to go with this next step. There are six locations around the map where you can get clocks to spawn in. And those clocks also are super close to those triangle symbols that you guys just wrote down on that piece of paper. So the six clock locations are one inside of the mail room, which is the room underneath spawn on this wall right here. And the symbol that goes along with that, which is either a triangle, an upside down triangle, a triangle with a line going through it, or a triangle upside down with a line going through it, is going to be underneath these stairs right here. Now, the next one is going to be up the stairs at spawn onto the bridge where the wheel is to steer the ship. And you'll notice that the clock is on the wall right there. Now, the symbol, which is one of those triangles, will be located underneath this desk right here. Now, the next location where you guys can find a clock is going to be inside of the first class cabins. Make your way into the first class cabins and then look at the bottom of this mirror right here. You'll notice a small clock sitting there and your symbol is going to be behind this window to the right hand side. Your next clock is going to be on the main staircase. So at the top of the staircase, you'll see the clock and above the door behind the clock, you'll see the symbol as well. The next one that you guys could get is the galley. So the kitchens at the back of the dining hall. The clock will be on the wall and the symbol will be on this cabinet behind the clock. And finally, your final clock location can be in third class under the poop deck at the end of the map where you originally picked up the artifact. And the symbol can be under the stairs. Now these symbols will only spawn in to four locations. They will not spawn into the locations that the clocks are set to 1140 or 1240. If your clocks are set to 1140 or 1240, then they are inactive. So don't worry about about those locations. So out of the six locations that I just showed you, there will be four locations that are active that don't have 1140 or 1240 on that clock and they will have the symbols. So look where the symbols should be and get your pen and paper ready next to that symbol. Go over to the clock that's near the symbol in that room and tell the time on that clock. But we're not going to be telling the time the same way that we tell a time on a normal clock. Look at the diagram that I'm showing you guys on screen right now that's to do with this clock. 12 o'clock on this clock is not going to be 12 12 o'clock anymore. We're going to call this zero. One o'clock is still one o'clock. Two o'clock is still two o'clock. Three o'clock is still three o'clock. Four o'clock is still four o'clock. Five o'clock is still five o'clock. And finally, six o'clock is, of course, six o'clock. Now, the difference in the way we're going to be doing this step is going backwards. So I want you guys to call 11 o'clock minus one. I want you guys to call 10 o'clock minus two. I want you guys to call nine o'clock minus three and so on. So eight o'clock would be minus four. Seven o'clock would be minus five. And then finally, six o'clock is always six. So this is how we're going to be looking at these clocks. So I want you guys to get your pen and paper out. And next to the symbol that you are working on inside of that room, I want you to put a little dash. And then you are going to write down exactly which way the minute hand, which is the longer hand on that clock, is facing on your new diagram. So you guys can see on my clock right here that I've got the minute hand facing the 10. So on our new diagram, that 10 is minus two. So I'm going to get the symbol that I've just found and write minus two next to that symbol. And then I'm going to put a comma next to minus two because that's going to be our first number. And our second number is going to be where the hour hand is facing to. So my hour hand is facing towards 11. So I'm going to put minus one. Now you guys need to do this for every single location that you found the clocks that had the symbols in that room. The clocks that weren't set to either 1140 or 1240. So by the time you've made your way around the map, found those symbols and wrote them down on your pen and paper, your pen and paper pad should look similar to this. Now, just remember that yours will be different to mine because it's different in every single game, but it should look like this. You should have the symbols, a dash. You should then have the number of the minute hand and then a comma and then the number of the hour hand. So you should have four in total. Once you've got all those symbols on your piece of paper, make your way over to the front of the boat where you've got these dials right here. You'll notice on every single dial, we'll have a corresponding symbol to ones that you guys just wrote down. Now, these symbols never change. 
So they're going to be the same in every single game. So the one on the right hand side is always going to be the normal triangle. And in my game, the normal triangle's minute hand was facing towards two. So I would then go over to the right hand side of that dial and hold the action button. So either square on PlayStation, X on Xbox or F on PC twice because it's set to the number two. Two just means two clicks. Same as if you had five. Five would mean five clicks. The hand on this dial does not need to be facing in the same way. You just need to do the same number of clicks that you wrote down on your piece of paper. So once again, you guys see me go to this dial, which is going to be the upside down triangle with the line going through it. Now inside of my game, the upside down triangle with the line going through it was set to 10. So mine would actually be minus two. So then I looked at the left hand side of this dial and take it back by two. And then the next one is of course the upside down triangle. And then finally, the final dial is of course the right side up triangle with a line going through it. So once you've inputted all of your minute hands onto those dials off your piece of paper, just rub out the minute hand numbers on the piece of paper because you don't need to worry about those anymore. Next, you're going to go and make your way over to the poop deck where you originally found the artifact. Right there, you will notice that there's two more of these dial things that you guys were just messing around with. Now, the one on the left is going to be associated with the triangle with the line going through it. And the one on the right hand side is going to be associated with the upside down triangle with a line going through it. So look at the second number in your sequence next to those symbols, which was originally the hour hand on the clock that you had. And then once again, do the same thing to this one as you did to the last one. So input that hour hand. So let's say, for example, you guys can see right now that my triangle with the line going through it, the hour hand on that was set to three. So I would then move it three spaces to the right. And then I'd go back and do the exact same thing to the upside down triangle with the line going through it, which for me was minus one. So I take it back by one. Now make your way down into the engine room. You'll notice that there's two more dials at the bottom of these stairs right here. The one on the left indicates the normal triangle and the one on the right indicates the upside down triangle. Once again, input the hours from those the exact same way that you did the ones upstairs. So whatever your triangle hour is, you then need to type that in to this dial. So for me, the hour on the normal triangle was one. So I'd move it one space. And then for me, the upside down triangle, which is going to be the one on the right hand side, the hour has on that clock was set to five. So I'd move it five spaces and then you can look inside of your inventory and you'll notice that the next step of the Easter egg has begun, which is called within the change of phases, all is conceived. And you have officially completed the clock step, which is by far the most crazy step of this Easter egg. So as long as you've done that, you are good to go. Okay guys, so I'm sorry about this being a little bit weird, but this is post pizza talking right here. All of my video footage corrupted from this step. So the elements that I'm talking about are gonna be different than the ones on the actual gameplay. So I'm just going to put an annotation on the screen correcting which ones I actually see in this gameplay because like I said, the one that I'm originally commentating over got corrupted. So you'll still be able to easily understand this step, but here we go. Okay, so moving on to the next step of this Easter egg. You guys are going to go and find output locations around the map. So basically plug sockets. There's going to be six spawns to these plug sockets, but only four are going to be active. You guys are going to be going up to these plug sockets and finding out exactly exactly which element is coming out of them. So the four locations that you guys have, starting out from the spawn location, is actually going to be through the bottom doors of spawn into state rooms and on the wall right here. You guys can notice that the one I've got right here is in fact the poison element. So I want you to get another piece of paper, write down spawn and then put a dash and put poison or whatever the element is inside of your game. Or if there's no element there, don't write down spawn and wait for the next location I'm going to show you guys where you might get an element there. You will need to remember where these are. The next location that an output could be in that you guys could be using is going to be at the top floor of the grand staircase on this wall right here. Inside of mine game, mine was not active, but this could be any other of the elements. So if it is active for you, just write stairs and then put the element there that's coming out of it. The next one that you guys can go over to is next to the Ra statue inside of the dining hall. It's gonna be behind the left-hand side wall right here. And you guys can see inside of my game that this is sparking water. So write down Ra perk or dining hall and just put water next to it. Or once again, whatever element it is showing in that output. The next output location that you guys could be getting is inside of the first class area next to the Zeus perk. So have a look on this wall right here. See if yours is active inside of my game 
it is, and I've got electricity on this one. So if you do have this one active, just like me, I would write down Zeus and then electricity. The next one that you guys could get is on the aft decks through this window right here. Inside of my game, this is not active, but it could be active in yours. So if it is active in yours, just write down aft decks and then whatever element it is. And then the final one is going to be inside of third class at the bottom of these stairs on the wall. Inside of my game, this element is fire. So I would write down third class and fire. Or you guys put third class and whatever element you have. Now that you've got that list, keep it handy because you will be needing that list. At this point, you guys need to get onto round nine. Round nine is the round that elemental zombies come in. And you guys have probably already guessed that you have got to get a specific elemental zombie kill next to the output that corresponds with that element. So let's say, for example, you guys saw inside of my spawn area, I had poison. I would then get a poison zombie to come over to that outlet. I would kill the poison zombie next to it. And then I would get this symbol on the floor. It's as simple as that. Just make sure you kill an elemental zombie that corresponds with the element coming out of the outlet that you guys have. Now you can only do one of these per round. So once you've got that symbol on the ground of a zombie, just flip the round, go to the next round and go over to the next outlet. Kill another elemental zombie that is corresponding with that outlet next to it. And then once again, flip the round, do the same on that round. And finally, one more time, flip the round again and go and get your final location where you can now get that elemental zombie over that outlet and kill it to get the fourth and final symbol. So at this point, you guys need to make sure that you have got perks. You need to make sure that you have got good weapons because you are going to be spawned inside of a mini boss fight. Now the step after these boss fights, you will need the Kraken. So if you've not already got the Kraken from the mystery box and you physically feel like you can't get it, let's get you a free Kraken right now. So to get a free Kraken, you need to make sure that you get one of these guys into the map. And if you kill them, they will drop a key. But keep in mind, if you kill them with your specialist weapon, they will not drop the key. You've got to kill them with a grenade, a gun, or even your shield, and then they will drop the key for you. It's not 100% guaranteed, but I normally get it within my first two or three chokers. So now that you picked up that key, you are going to go and have a look at five locations inside of the map where you could find a chest which is spawned in. The first location that a chest could spawn in is underneath the spawn area inside of the mail rooms right here. The next location that a chest could spawn in is at the bottom of the state rooms on the bottom floor right here. The next location a chest could spawn in is at the back of the galley right here. The next one where another chest could spawn in is inside of the provisions area or the freezer, which is near the engine room. And the final location where you guys could find the chest is inside of the turbine room. And this is where I find my chest. So go and open the chest by placing the key that you just got off the choker into the chest and then get zombie kills around that chest. It's going to take around 15 to 20 zombie kills to fill the chest. And once it's full, it will move. It will move to another one of the locations that you guys just looked at. So go and check all those other locations. And once you find the box again, you're going to do the exact same thing. You're going to fill this up with either 15 or 20 zombie souls and that chest will once again close. And now finally, you're going to go and make your way over to the other locations one more time where you are going to go and find that chest again. Filling up with another 15 to 20 zombie souls. And as soon as you do that, the chest will close and then it will reopen again for around 10 to 15 seconds where it will show you an item. You guys see in my game right here that I get a globe, but there's five items that could be shown to you. So depending on what item you get depends on where you are going to go and find your free Kraken right now. So starting from the spawn area, over the left-hand side, you will find the binocular spawn. If you've got the binoculars, your Kraken will spawn onto this table right here. Making your way up the stairs, past the grand staircase, and onto the boat deck, you will find the compass spawn on this box right here. So if you guys get the compass, your free Kraken will spawn in on this box right here. Making your way over the right-hand side of the boat right now, on the mid-deck, you will notice that the next spawn is the globe spawn, and this is where I get my free Kraken. So you'll notice I just see my Kraken there, and I pick it up. Going over to the fourth spawn right now, which is going to be over the left-hand side of the aft decks. Drop down, and you'll find the wrench tool that's on this box right here. And the final one is over on the poop deck, over the right-hand side, where you'll find the box with the telescope on. And they are all the five locations where you can get your free Kraken. So now that you've got your free Kraken, pack a punch it. It's going to make this so much easier. And now you're going to use the symbols that you spawned in before. And you can teleport on these symbols now. But you've got to teleport in a very specific order. So make your way over to the elemental zombie outlet that you killed for poison. Wherever you killed the poison zombie at that outlet to spawn in that symbol, make your way there. You are now going to teleport by looking at the symbol and holding down your action button. So square on PlayStation, X on Xbox, or F on PC on the poison symbol. This will spawn you into kind of a miniature lockdown boss fight thing. This one is relatively easy. You've got a lot of space to work with. Just kill all the zombies that you could possibly kill and kill 
the Blight Fathers. It's super, super simple. But the one thing that you need to remember with this one is kill poison zombies with your Kraken. If you kill enough poison zombies with your Kraken, they will drop a piece on the floor that you will need to pick up. This is the poison elemental type for the Kraken upgrade. You need this for a step. So kill as many poison zombies with that Kraken and one will eventually drop this element. Pick up the element and you are good to go. Just kill the rest of the zombies, kill the Blight Fathers and it will spawn you back into the map. Also, during that challenge, you will get a max ammo and you will also get a carpenter. Feel free to pick those up whenever you want, but don't feel pressured to pick them up. If you complete the challenge without picking them up, they will still be waiting for you there when you teleport back. So pick them up then if you haven't done already. Then pick up the artifact. After this, make your way over to the outlet symbol where you killed the water zombie. Go and teleport once again. And this is probably the most difficult challenge out of them all. So at this point, I would totally advise you guys to have that Kraken, but also have homunculuses. Before you go into this, just use all your cash spin in that box trying to get the homunculuses because they are going to come so much in handy in this step and you will definitely need them for the boss fight. So just make sure you try and get homunculuses. Once you teleport through that water symbol, you will be spawned inside of this area right here, which will start filling up with water. If you've got homunculuses, great. Just throw them on the ground and it'll make it so, so easy. If not, just use your Kraken and your specialist weapon. You will get Blight Fathers spawning in. So once again, as soon as you kill two Blight Fathers and a few zombies, this round will end and teleport you back. And then make sure you pick up that artifact once again. Once again, when you teleport back, you are going to go and make your way over to another symbol. The next symbol that you guys are going to go and do is electric. To so make your way over to the electric outlet that you killed the electric zombie on and teleport once again. This one is fairly simple. Once again, just get a load of kills, kill the Blight Fathers. Super, super simple. You guys will be fine. And finally, the final symbol that you guys have to go over to is where you killed your fire zombie at the fire outlet. Teleport to that one. And once again, kill the zombies. You're going to get chokers on this round. So kill the chokers, kill the fire zombies. And then once you finish that challenge, you'll be teleported back to the map. Now you do need to remember after all of these challenges to make sure you pick up the artifact. The artifact will be available after every single challenge. So make sure you pick it up after every single one. Now you've got all the artifacts and completed that snap. You are now ready to go and upgrade your Kraken. So you need to go and get all the buildable pieces for the Kraken. Make your way over to the galley, which is at the back of the dining hall, where you will find a piece on this ledge right here or inside of one of the shelves right here. Each piece has two spawn locations, so you should be fine to get these. And they are all spawned in the same room as each other. So the next one that you guys can go and get is inside of the first class lounge, where you can either find a piece on this table right here or over on this table right here. And the final one that you guys need to go and get is inside of the cargo hold. It's either going to be to the left-hand side of this car or over the left-hand side of this area right here. Now, once you've got all those three pieces, make your way over to the workbench, which is inside of the engine room. You can now craft that buildable and for 6,000 points, you can place on the poison element upgrade for that Kraken. You will need that for this step. And that's why I told you to get it inside of that mini poison boss fight. At this point, make your way over inside of the turbine room. Inside of that area, you will notice that there is now blue pipes that are spraying out gas. There's going to be nine pipes in that room that you guys have to shoot with that poison elemental upgraded Kraken. Now, some of them are a little bit tricky to find, but the room is basically symmetrical. So as long as you find one on one side, you'll find one on the other side or roundabout. It's a little bit symmetrical, but not 100%. But nine pipes isn't too difficult to find. Just make your way round, take your time, and you should have them within a couple of minutes. Shoot that pipe, and as long as you get a hit marker on that pipe and you notice liquid coming out of it, that means that you have hit it correctly. If you don't get the liquid coming out, just shoot it again and you'll be good to go. Now, after you've shot all nine pipes with that Venom upgraded Kraken, you will then notice that the pipes will burst and the room will start filling up with water. If you haven't done already since you teleported, back from your lockdowns, make sure at this point, flip the round. Once the room fills up with water and you flip the round, a false pack-a-punch machine will spawn in to that turbine room. You can now place the artifact inside of that pack-a-punch machine and pack-a-punch the artifact. Pick up the artifact when it comes out and you are ready to go onto the next step of this Easter egg. So drain that room by going over to this area of the map and activating the drain switch. And now you are ready to go and find symbols that are around the map. Now there's nine symbols that you guys have to go and find and each symbol corresponds with a different thing in the sky. So there's seven planets and there's a sun and a moon. So to start this next step, you guys are gonna have to go and activate all of these symbols. So the first one is inside of the spawn area or the forecastle and this is gonna be the sun symbol. So activate the sun symbol and you are ready to move on to the next one. Make your way over to the mail room, which is underneath that area where you will find the mercury symbol on this wall right here. So just activate it and now you're ready to go to the next 
next one. Your next symbol is going to be inside of the state rooms on the lower level right near spawn, which is going to be the planet Uranus. And it's going to be behind this pot plant right here. The next one that you guys could get is on the bridge, which is the upper hand part of this area by going up the stairs at spawn, which is going to be Saturn. And that's going to be located on this wooden drawer at the bottom. The next one that you guys can go and get is inside of the lower staircase. And this is going to be the moon symbol. This is located next to this window right here. So activate that moon symbol and you're good to move on to the next one. Your next symbol is going to be inside of the millionaire suites. And this is going to be the Venus symbol. And this is going to be located next to this side table next to the bed right here. Your next symbol is going to be on the aft decks inside of this lifesaver right here, which is going to be the Neptune symbol. And your final two symbols, which one is going to be inside of the engine room on the floor right here, which is going to be Jupiter. And your final one is going to be inside of the boiler room, which you need to lie down for. And it's on this wall right here, which is going to be Mars. Now that you've activated all of those symbols, you can make your way back to the spawn area of the map, go down through the mail room and finally drop down into the cargo hold. You'll notice that the cargo hold is now filled up with water. So just make your way over and drain that water. And once the water finally drains, you'll now notice that a model of a solar system has spawned into the map on this box right here. Your job right now is going over to that solar system, activating the solar system and writing down exactly which planet lights up in which order. So look at my graphic on the screen right now. And this tells you which planet is which. It's really simple to follow if you look at this graphic and have this graphic out while you are playing the map. So activate your solar system. And then after the first one, pause and then look at my picture. Look at which one lit up on yours before you pause the game and then figure out what the name of it is. Write that name down on a piece of paper. And it would also help out if you put a dash next to that planet name and then wrote which area it is located in. So the locations I just showed you guys before. Unpause the game and do the same again. Write the next planet down and then write where it is located on the map. You're going to do this for all seven of the planets and the sun and the moon. This will be different in every single game and the sun is always last. So that makes it a little bit easier. Once you wrote down the correct order that these flash up in, you are good to go. Now keep in mind, you can activate this as much as you want. So it really doesn't matter. Once you've done this, make your way up to the top of the boat where you will notice that you have now got planets in the sky. You are going to have to shoot the planets in the correct order one by one. So don't shoot them all. Just shoot one of them to begin with, which is your first planet. And I can show you guys right now what planet each one is. So this one is Mercury. This one is Venus. This one is the moon. This one is Mars. This one is Jupiter. This one is Saturn. This one is Uranus. And this one is Neptune. Neptune is always in the ocean. It'll just rotate around the boat. So shoot the first planet that you have got wrote down on your piece of paper. Then once you've shot it, you'll see a blue flash and make your way over to the location that it spawns in at. It's always a good idea to shoot these close to the location because you'll only have around 20 seconds once you've shot it to go and pick up the blue orb that floats down to the location where the original symbol was. So run down, pick up that orb, make your way back and then shoot your next one in the sequence and so on and so forth. Keep on shooting the planet in the sequence, go over to the location where the original symbol was and then pick up the orb. It's as simple as that. Now don't do the sun. Once you've done the sun, it will spawn you in to the semi boss fight and you don't want that just yet. So once you've done all of them except for the sun, get boss fight ready. Make sure you've got all perks that you need. Make sure you've got the upgraded Kraken. And at this point, I would totally advise you guys to change your poison Kraken into a water Kraken. So make sure you kill some water zombies and try and get the water element. And once again, make your way over to the buildable table where you are now going to swap the poison element with the water element. This will be crucial for that boss fight. And also for your secondary at this point, you need to get the Hellion, the RPG out of the mystery box. So go and keep hitting the mystery box until you get the Hellion and pack a bunch of Hellion multiple times. So it is super, super strong. So at this point, you guys should have the upgraded water Kraken. You should have the Hellion and you guys should have the homunculus as well. If you've got those three items, shoot the sun and go over to the orb that spawns in. At this point, it will spawn you in to a little race. You've got a race over to the other side of the map while icebergs are blocking almost every single one of your doorways along the way. As soon as you spawn into this bit, make your way over to this corner of the iceberg right here, where you are going to shoot the iceberg with your Kraken. Making sure you shoot the iceberg and leave a little gap on the left of your shot where you can shoot the zombies at the same time as well. It's going to take 10 bullets of the Kraken to break this iceberg. Once it's broke, make your way up the stairs and through this area right here. When you make your way to your second iceberg, bring out your specialist and knock down the iceberg with that specialist. Once you've done that, run straight to the next one. Break that next one down with your specialist 
as well. And now at this point, throw another homunculus. Shoot this iceberg eight times with your Kraken, and before the reload animation, shoot it twice with your Hellion. You'll notice that it will instantly break, and at this point, you might even get a max ammo from this one as well. The max ammo can also spawn in on the next iceberg too, but you might get it on this one. So once you've done this, you should be out of homunculuses. So pump the equipment elixir right now. Throw another homunculus and break the next iceberg with eight shots of your Kraken and two of the RPG. Next, make your way to the next iceberg where you are going to do the exact same. Eight shots of your Kraken, two RPGs, and once again, throw another homunculus right now as well, where you're going to do the same thing to the next iceberg. Eight shots of the Kraken, two RPG. Once you are through that area, bring out your specialist again, where you are going to break the next iceberg. Then run over to the final iceberg and break it with your specialist too. This will instantly end the challenge and you will have completed the iceberg challenge. That is by far the easiest way to run through this. Now that you've done that, you are ready for the boss fight. So spawn straight into the boss fight where you are going to be inside of this room right here. You'll notice that the eye boss spawns in, but you don't need to pay any attention to him right now. All you've got to do is kill zombies, blight fathers, and chokers. And once you've killed enough of these, it will end that challenge. It'll move you to the next room. Inside of this next room, you are going to do the exact same thing. You are going to kill chokers, you are going to kill blight fathers, and you are going to kill zombies. The only difference inside of this room is that you have got ice tornadoes on the ground. If zombies go over these tornadoes, they get a little bit stronger. But honestly, just forget about it. It really doesn't make much of a difference. Just kill all the zombies, kill the Blight Fathers, kill the Chokers, and make sure you pick up your max ammo and your Carpenter after every single one of these challenges as well. Next, it's going to spawn you into the third challenge. This is where your homunculuses are going to come into play. You've got two hallways in this area, and the boss will shine its beam down one of these corridors and then over to the next one. It could do the same one twice, but it's normally in rotation. Throw your homunculus to the back of this hallway and wait to see the beam. As soon as you see the beam, stick your head out of the corner of one of the rooms and fire your rocket launcher at the boss. You're going to do this around three or four times in total. And after each single one, throw your homunculus to the back of the map. And if you need to, use your equipment as well to get more homunculus. Or you could just pick up the max ammo and use the homunculus from that. After you've done this either three or four times, it will end this round and move you to the next boss location where you are going to be training up on this deck right here. Just train up and once the boss starts shooting his beam again, use the Hellion rocket launcher on the eye again. If you do four rockets on this boss a number of three times, this boss will end this phase and move you into the final phase of the boss fight. Inside of this final phase of the boss fight, he's going to charge his beam up. When he's firing his beam, shoot two rockets into him. On the next one, when he charges his beam, fire two rockets into him again. And then on his third beam, throw an homunculus down, fire two rockets inside of the eye, and then instantly reload your rocket launcher. He's going to start a scream charge. This is a white feature inside of the game, which means that if you don't do something at this point, you will instantly die. So because your homunculus is down, the zombies can't get to you. And because you've just reloaded your rocket launcher, you've got four rockets available. Shoot those four rockets directly into the eye, and this will stop the attack. You need to do this exact phase three times, and well done. You have completed a void of despair and you have completed the entire solo Easter egg. I hope this guide helped you out a lot. If it did, make sure you absolutely smash a like on this video right now. We're going to be aiming for 3,115 likes. And if you guys are brand new to the channel, make sure you click that subscribe button to become the latest member of the Pizza Club. I appreciate you guys coming out for this one. Thank you for watching and peace out.